Hello, it's Teresa here from South East London. I hope you're all keeping well and things are looking good for you. They're certainly improving here. I've had a few um, inquiries as to, you know, where's the next project and this is it. And I'm sorry for the, the delay in this, in releasing um, this latest uh, video, but this is quite a big project and it's taken me a long time to get to this stage. It still isn't finished. For those of you who who have been um, looking forward to the next one, which this is, I thought I'd release it early. I was going to release it in its entirety when it's finished, but <laughs> that's going to take quite a long time, I found out. This is just a little sideways step from our normal projects, and I thought it would make a really nice break from all the heavy designing and the heavy slow stitch work it's a total progression of an idea and the inspiration came from a walk in the local park a couple of weeks ago it was a beautiful day and um, the daffodils were out in bloom it was just gorgeous it was lovely i thought i'm going to use the daffodils and flowers for the inspiration for my next project this one but I didn't want to do uh, the normal picture like we do in our paintings. So I thought, I don't know what to do. And it all just seemed to fall into place. I thought, I know what I'll do. I was still getting a lot of comments on the first, or I am still getting a lot of comments on the first journal. And um, that went down really well. So I thought, I will make another journal full of different techniques and little projects and instead of doing one big project we'll do lots of little ones so this is it now i started off with the journal cover it's in slow stitch as you can see our, our old favorite slow stitch now the design inspiration is from the daffodils and it will be explained in the next video when we actually start this is going to be a mixed media project and we're going to combine painting only a little bit of painting sewing collage and paperwork but mostly sewing using as i said a variety of techniques for this i'm combining two stitches our favorite regular slow stitch and cross stitch now we have done cross stitch in the past but haven't really concentrated on it in its own right so this time we're going to look at cross stitch in some depth now don't forget slow stitch is not just running stitch running stitch is running stitch and it was adopted as slow stitch because it's quite easy to do anyone can do this stitch running stitch and it's associated with mindfulness but any stitch can be slow stitch these herringbone feather stitch sorry feather stitch here and french knots here the blanket stitch that you can see and even the beading can all be slow stitch just like cooking can be um, slow cooking anything you do washing the car can be slow washing the car it's about mindfulness and a state of mindfulness so i'm going to bring in cross stitch in this as a slow stitch now at this point i have to explain i have worked and i'm working on the sewing the sewn examples or what we call ephemera which means decorating um, embellishment so I've worked on those, but I've also bought, bought some little examples or small pieces from eBay. It's very difficult for these people to make a living at the moment, especially if it's their business. So I'm trying to patronise the local artists and craftspeople and the local shops as well, the small indie shops. So I turned to eBay and I have bought some small pieces which I will then embellish myself. I'm not going to do a flip through of this because it's not actually finished. All I've done is made some markers in there and placed certain things in certain places. So it's a real big beast. 
I need to put something along here so the cover isn't actually finished the spine isn't finished either it's very difficult to get this in <laughs> with the camera where it is so the spine isn't finished um, so that is where I am at the moment I'll video each stage and page as I do it as I did in the very first journal so I'm going to finish here and we'll move on as I said this will be a long a long project but I'll try to keep it as short as possible okay so having said that now it's time to actually start and I really hope you enjoy this because I've not finished it yet but I'm really enjoying it especially the designing bit of this and I hope you enjoy it as well so, yeah. so to begin with we're going to take a nice fresh sheet of paper and i know it looks daunting at this stage just looking at your white paper but the main thing is we get down some shapes now my inspiration i'm thinking now of daffodils you might be thinking of something else like oh my god this is too hard um but don't worry because it really isn't i'm just going to dab some shapes on my page like so i'm going to cover the whole page in these shapes so that's the yellow down now when i looked at the daffodils inside there were splashes the trumpets on many of them were orange so i'm now going to add the orange and i'm going to make the orange out of our primary colors the red yellow and blue and to make the orange all i'm going to do is add a little bit of red with a little bit of yellow and just mix those until I get the orange that I want there now I finish with the yellow so I'm not too worried about contaminating it with the with the red ah there we go there's the orange I want so in the middle where the trumpets Oh, I'm just going to do this. Now you see how easy that is? Already we're developing the progression of an idea and making a design. The shapes are quite irregular. Um, so it really depends on how you use your brush and exactly what amount what paint you use um, so you really don't know what effect you're going to get now there's also a lot of green in the daffodils I had in my vase there were all you could see were the daffodil heads and lots and lots of greenery so I'm now going to make green for the greenery with my other primary colors my other primary colour I should say blue oh look at that now if you want darker colour or a lighter colour you just add the, one of the neutrals black obviously for the darker um, white if we want it lighter so you can make all the colours you need more or less with just the three color, with just the three primary colours so I'm just going to fill this shape with the green now I added a pot to mine I had a little bit of an accident <laughs> I spilt something on it and had to start again but this is not a million miles away from the one that I did earlier on but I did add a pot to this and I'm sorry that I did that because I got carried away and I really don't like it so I'm ignoring that but anyway this is dry nice and dry and I've numbered all the flowers now all the flowers are numbered from 1 to 11 and I'm now going to trace these off round we go just to get the shapes of the yellow the yellow splodges and this is a nice way of designing because you have now designed this no longer a painting we're calling this a design you have now designed this from an initial blank page to the start the progression of an of a design i have cut out the blodges the splodges the shapes 
I backed some fabric if you can see here I backed some fabric with interfacing and I've cut out all the splodges there we go the four there we've got two or three there one two three one two three and so on three there so this now is a replica of this with regards to placement I chose the background um, I liked this I had enough for front and back and it's 12 inches square so I've backed this with calico I've interfaced it like I always do interface that with iron on interfacing and then I've backed it with calico so there we are all the splodges are in place on the background I have kept referring back to play the placement the numbers on if you can see the numbers there there it was easy to go back and place them seven against seven so the next stage is to tack them tack them down I've pinned the splodges the daffodils nicely interface I also found some of these flowers that I did for the Frida project and I thought perhaps I might be able to incorporate some of these or use the smaller ones in the center now I'm really not sure about this so I need some time to think about it I'm not sure about just placing them like that I think they're far too big I might place them in between but I don't really want to cover up all this because this is going to be greenery it's going to be slow stitched greenery so I need to think about how, what the next step is I have some of that as well that is really pretty could interface this and pop that in the center I could cover some of these up hmm that looks quite good on the screen cover some of them up I have the same scrap here in yellow so I might use these at the moment as you know it's a lot of mites because sometimes it just takes its own its own way and I found this this was on an old pillow slip I thought I might be able to use that so I'm now going to spend some time just looking at this working out what the next step is apart from the tacking I might even leave the tacking now until I've worked out the centers and do the tacking all in one go so as soon as I've made a decision made a start I'll get back to you I've put the flower heads down in place there are now four layers to the flower now two of them two layers are by using the two fabrics that I showed you the red and the yellow I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so perhaps you can see them more right now I've placed the flowers the original shapes the ones that were numbered so the lemon ones here onto some net now the net is um, irregular in shape as well and I just very very roughly cut them out chopped them about with the scissors and I just think that makes a really nice shape the whole thing together makes a shape so I placed them I pinned them and then tacked them and as usual I have just clipped the pieces if you can see each piece has just been clipped so they're quite ready now to be sewn on if I show you the back you can see here that is the amount of tacking I make that smaller now that is just the amount of tacking that I've done so this I've just stretched the thread from one flower head to the next the next task would be to slow stitch but I'm still unsure whether that is the finished arrangement I think I might try and use some of these now I'm not sure what colors the orange or the pinky red will go I'd like to make maybe some sort of composition with the eye so the eye is running nicely 
around I don't really just want to dot them around I'd like a nice maybe composition now this is just thinking aloud whether I'll actually do that I don't know but that is just one idea or to group them together no I don't like that idea no 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 not at all not even sure about the colour but I just think it needs something and I don't really want to to um, cover up too much of the background because of the stalks and the, the stems and the leaves um, yeah this is <laughs> this is quite um, a little bit of a headache because do I really need to introduce these I just uh, I do feel that um, it's going to be very very samey if I don't break up this and introduce something else because it is samey now and if we look at this it's very samey the flowers are the same the leaves are the same there's nothing there to actually take your attention and for your eye to focus on right so this is how far I've got and I think this makes a really nice composition it takes the eye right the way round now and it joins them up and it it pushes the composition together it push, pushes the design together and not only that it's created some really gorgeous negative shapes here in the background um, you see these lovely shapes here these are negative shapes and I think these shapes are just as nice as these shapes so it's time now to start the slow stitch I've got a nice needle it isn't too long it's got a lovely big eye and it's not too sharp it's, but the main thing is it has a lovely long eye here long enough to get three strands of embroidery silk or floss through there so once you've put your your floss or your thread through there you then need to knot it so put a nice knot in the back not too thick because you don't want it pressing sorry pressing through to the front later on okay now the colors I'm going to stick to are the colors here so these colours here, orange, red, green, and the light and the dark of those particular colours, I'm going to stick to those. However, I know there will come a time where I need to add another little bit of colour for the same reasons that we needed to add another little bit of colour to this okay so what I'm going to do I've decided while I was having my coffee and staring at this I'm going to do this not in single units round and round and round and round how boring is that I'm going to do I'm going to follow the shapes all the way round where they touch I'm just going to go across where they touch let me just enlarge that so you can see what I'm talking about sounds like I'm talking absolute nonsense doesn't it if you can't see what I'm talking what I'm looking at right so I should start that again I'm going to start here and I'm going to follow the line all the way round the edge and where these flowers touch I'm just going to cross over and still follow the line all the way round keeping off the background I'm just keeping to the flowers at the moment so I should carry on round here around there clipping as many pieces of fabric as I can as I go on this laborious journey no that's not nice <laughs> on this wonderful exciting journey I'm going to clip as many pieces of fabric as I can and I'm just going to keep doing that at the moment no doubt along the way 
I'll be creating other shapes and I shall start then going off in a different direction. But just now, just at the beginning, I'm just going to take the first stitch here. Little stitches, just running stitches all the way round. And to those of you who haven't done this yet, it is really lovely. I know I said laborious a little while ago, but that was all in jest because this is just so lovely and relaxing. This the next line I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do in purple. So I'm introducing another colour already. I didn't think I'd be doing that so soon. But I'm going to introduce the purple. I changed the needle for a shorter, finer needle with a smaller eye. And I just found that that went through the four la layers better. All I'm going to do at this stage is follow the orange line all the, or the red line all the way round as I have done here. Now, I think the purple, which complements uh, the yellow, will just bring out something of the background. Although there isn't purple in the background, I think it will join the background to the flowers. But the other colour that is on here, apart from the white, orange, red, pink, um, yellow, is purple. So this is the second row of slow stitch, um, the one completed in purple. So this purple row on each on each flower, just following the basic shape. I haven't done what I did with the, the first colour, the red, and just followed the outline all the way around until it met itself. Um, I've done each one individually this time now i think i need time just to sit back for a while to see what the next move should be because at the moment it's reached the scruffy stage and i can't quite work out whether i need another row of slow stitch around there or something else so what i'm going to do for the next um the next thing is concentrate on the edges i'm going to now concentrate on the outline and I've decided to do that in reverse button stitch or reverse blanket stitch I mean. Now if you have your books to hand, the stitches books that we made, um, turn to the blanket stitch, also called buttonhole stitch but always remember the two stitches are very very different and I think we might find it a bit easier to turn to this page for some reason oh yeah this is the buttonhole wheel but you can see the stitch i think more clearly on this one so this is the buttonhole stitch just done in a circular in a wheel the same as it's done here that's this the example to go with this so that is the wheel and yeah i've done the wheel there as well so we haven't actually got a straight piece but <laughs> The reverse buttonhole, trying to shout over the cuckoo clock, is basically this stitch here. It's looking very much like that one there. Now, let me just see if I can make that a little bit. See if that can come out here. This stitch um, here is reverse buttonhole. Now, reverse buttonhole, because... The head, the line, or the top, is actually facing the other way. Here we have the head, or the top of the stitch, facing outwards. So you've got this nice, neat edge. So you have that the line on the outside with the spokes of the stitch facing inward. Reverse, you have the head facing inwards and the spikes outwards so i'm just going to show you how to do this so this is how it looks on your applique your piece to be sewn down on our scruffy piece of fabric now this line here the top of the stitch which is normally the edge in the neat bit should be sitting here 
on the edge along here but because this fabric here frays so much if I bring the needle out here where it should be brought out to this stitch it just falls to pieces it just frays so I've had to move in a little bit but that line should be on the edge here so how do we do that then right it's very very easy so bearing in mind this line should be on the edge here but I might have to move in just a fraction once again the big needle and the wool and the rough fabric here is so you can see it see what I'm doing so we're going to take the needle from the back nice knot needle in from the back through the background fabric and through the fabric to be applied appliqued hold it down I'll hold it down with your thumb and then go into the background now bearing in mind this needle should be brought out on the line but that's the nearest I can get it and there is your first spoke reversed so we have the nice head here the outline inside and the spoke outside so we're we'll just repeat that again hold the thread down with your thumb into the background fabric and up through there Oops. now of course if you want nice long spikes gently pull it now if you want nice long spikes you just take it further down to the background fabric but still take your needle as close to the edge of the applique the fabric to be appliqued so you get the night there you go so we do that again. this is the last one to sew to sew around now all the others have been done I'm just going to do this on screen for a little while so you can see just how the others were all sewn on just as I showed you in, in the demonstration earlier on hold thread down and just like so now I'll show you in a minute all the others but this I have to warn you is so totally addictive once you start doing this you just can't stop so this is all I have done to all the others and I really don't want to stop doing it so with that in mind I'll just make that a little bit smaller now so let's have a look so this is the one that I need to finish off one there all the others have been done right I like it round that way that's that's better so all the others have been done now at this stage um, can you see the spiky bits all the spiky bits around here and I just love that effect I think that looks really nice and I think it might look nice later on with some beads on these spiky bits or French knots I'm thinking of introducing some green and some white now I don't want too much green because the background is going to be green but it will probably be a darker green or a mixture of greens I'm not sure where to put the green at the moment but it definitely needs um, to be used in some of these at least those but meanwhile I will finish off this this one here and then I'm going to make a star on those before I do the green because I think the white is going to be so powerful on there it might change the shade oops the shade of the green that I use it might even change the color completely so I think the next thing to do is to get the white in and then have another look and see what's needed now for the the pink ones and the two orange ones I've decided to use a regular blanket stitch I thought that would be nice set against the spikiness of the reverse blanket stitch so I'm going to start here with a knot in the back oh let me make that this bigger pull the thread down with our thumb secure it with the thumb and then go in 
wherever however far you want to space it just like so keeping the thread held down can you see that it's a round chain shape put your thumb on there and just pull that pull that thread while you secure that and gently pull it and that's your first stitch in at the side however far apart you want them you want them so in at the side here through to the back and then out again in the front so you're still securing this thread down with the thumb and then you pull it don't forget it's as long as short as you want Second one. and almost finished now another couple of stitches and the first flower with the white blanket stitch will be finished so take it back to the start in through the back and just knot it off just a, a neat knot don't, don't go through to the front with that knot that off and that is the first flower in white yes I'm quite pleased with that I am pleased that I'll make that just a little bit bigger there we go now I will carry on and I'll do all the other flowers in exactly the same way before I start sewing the green I just want to show you how far I've got I did put the white all the way around the colored like the pink and the orange flowers um, I started off doing them as I said I would with the regular blanket stitch I did two and I didn't like the effect so I've left the two with regular blanket stitch and then I carried on with reverse blanket stitch which I think is far prettier so the next thing to do now is introduce a little bit of green I'm here and I introduced the green on some of these and added purple on some others and blue on other ones I ha I'm not sure what to do with these ones at the moment these red and orange ones but I stood back and I had a look they're still very plain so I've added the same stitch still reverse blanket stitch to fill up some of the spaces in these shapes here now I'm going to carry this along on all the yellow pieces just filling up the spaces to fit or making the stitches to fit the spaces like here and here and as you can see a few stitches here just filling up spaces and that's all I'm going to do and I think that's adding an interest there so I will carry on and do that and I'm really enjoying doing this stitch so I think because I'm enjoying that so much there's going to be an awful lot of reverse blanket stitch going on so I think I shall reserve most of the slow stitch for the background <laughs> but who knows okay so I'm going to carry on turned it round. Um, I've now decided that the four flowers here which were originally along the side if we go back to the you see the four flowers here there so these four flowers here were originally down that way uh, I think it looks better this way now blanket stitch I think for these I might go back to the slow stitch that I started with that you can still see around the edges on here the the yellow uh, sorry the orange and the purple I think I might use that on these I need to sort a color out that's going to show because the purple that I used on this one and that one and there didn't really make much effect so I think it needs they need a brighter color now as always I do like to give the work some depth as you know and I normally do that by using the dark um, net I will add some of this to these plain flowers that are left because it's still very very flat so I think if I just place some net over these areas making sure that I do get those those plainer flowers I think that might just give it a little bit of something else 
and then I will slow stitch over them by right. using the, the net here the black net on these shapes it's created even more shapes and close up it looks really good I love all these shapes here that it's created now I didn't just keep the net to the, the flowers as I said I would some of it overlapped onto the yellow and I was going to trim it off and, and then I thought no I'm going to leave it and I'm pleased I did because as I just said it has made some really lovely shapes now it's loo I think it's actually losing the daffodil um, look maybe even losing the flower look at the moment but doesn't matter it really doesn't matter it's taking on a life of its own it's green. I think no, I'm going to keep right. this background green like here like on our inspiration so I'm going to keep the background here different greens maybe light green dark green that's our contrast so we're still working with our contrast like we are here with the light and the dark um, so I should pick an area maybe around here start maybe there and I'm going to follow the shapes around round so we'll end up with lots and lots of related lines anyway, this so. is how far I've got now I've used a herringbone no sorry sorry feather stitch all the way around as you can see in various greens I've got a light green against a dark green got very dark green here so there's quite a lot of contrast going on a lot of our design principles going on here also used the slow stitch or the running stitch it's all slow stitch I've started outlining the center bits in chain stitch now I've only done two I did them last night these need to be outlined to make them stick out a little bit I did go to the old favourite at first thinking about the pinwheel and then I thought no I've used those quite a lot recently so let's go for a change and the change is going to be the chain stitch maybe not on all of them I'm going to play it by ear this is why I've spaced them this way at the moment I'm going to follow it down so we get a nice composition so the eye travels down here and then I should see if I need to add more. I'm very tempted just to jump in with two feet, start here and just do them all. But um, I just want to play this one by ear just for a little while. So I will So just very, very quickly show you how to do the feather stitch. Just a brief recap. You can always fast forward if you don't want to see this, if you, you know it. Once again, the big needle, the big open weave fabric and the wool is for you to see what I'm doing. It's just so it comes out on the screen because a tapestry needle, embroidery needle and silk on a fine background just wouldn't be seen. So knot, a nice knot in from the back to the front, hold this down with your thumb then decide how wide you want it and take it in wherever you want it, how wide you want it and then you're going to bring the needle out between you see you're going to bring the needle out between these two as long as you want it so I won't mind that length keeping the thread held down with your thumb gently pull it and then you can just gradually ease your thumb off like so and there you go your first stitch now you're going to bring it out over this side now do exactly the same so over here parallel to there and then once again down here there you go and this is your second stitch now the next stitch is worked exactly the same way but you'll bring it out this side so exactly the same over here 
in a row with that, in line with that, down here, then as long as you want it. Now that is how to do feather stitch, but because we do this as an art and we're about texture and shape, we vary it. We might have a big stitch there because we're working with contrast. We might have a bigger stitch there and not fully shaped. It's up to you. When you're doing your work, you make your rules. The next stitch might even be bigger. So it's entirely up to you. But that is how you work feather stitch. Now, chain stitch. Yes, those needles were, those scissors were upside down. <laughs> it isn't your eyes, your eyes are fine. For some reason, I use those upside down. Or back to front whatever right so in from the back okay and we're going to make a link oops in from the back we're going to make a link so it's very similar to this stitch but we're going to close it at the top so as long as you want it and then back in the same hole as long as you want it now I won't mind that length there's your first link then just repeat that for as long as you want your chain and this chain stitch belongs to a family twisted chain and all sorts of chains there I have to do twisted chain at some time because that is a beautiful stitch those of you who did the tree bark sample going back some time ago might be in first lockdown we used a variety of chain stitches in that, so if you needed a reference, you could always find that one. I think it's under lockdown. So that's the chain stitch all done. I've just gone round the centres here. I've used purple on most of them, but on three, I introduced a dark blue. It was beginning to look very purplish, so I thought I needed to break up that samey sameness of the purple color and all i've done i've just added the dark blue um in the three places there quick demonstration of french knots i've covered this up that's it so it doesn't dazzle you while i'm doing this so nice knot in from the back hold this thread down with your thumb like so now the needle's going to do the work so we're going to take the needle and go one two now this depends on how big and thick you want your knot i'm doing two there don't go back into the same hole otherwise you'll just pull it pull it through and there is your knot so i'm going to move along i'll do that again hold the thread down with your thumb like so needle one we'll do it once this time once in at the side and pull there you go easy now if you want to I'm going to start my sewing my French knots in the middle so I'm going to start there and I'm using the six strands six strands of thread in a needle with a nice point on the end and I'm just going to go from side to side twist the thread around the needle and then across now I've chosen this color because it matches the, these colors here so it's going to bring forward the pink of the colors there so just oops so round and in and I'm only putting one twist on these knots and then I'm going to work the light the dark green here in light green so I'm going to bring that color now into the French knots
going to hold this up and you can just see where I've gone round the centers or part of the centers with some small glass beads of different colors okay now I've not kept to a regular shape they're not all round they're irregular shapes just to accentuate the irregular shape of the actual yellow flower now I've left I think there are three there that I need to do and I'm going to do one now just to demonstrate how it's done but I'm not sure if you're actually going to see it because the beads are tiny everything is now small so I'm going to make this as big as I can there and we'll have a go anyway so what I'm going to do <clears throat> this is regular sewing thread it's a nice strong you hear that nice strong machine sewing thread with a nice strong knot in the back, in the end now you need a nice strong knot for obvious reasons the last thing you want to do is string up your thread um, with all the beads and then pull it right the way through and lose your beads as I did yesterday has to say I have to say um, so nice strong knot there a nice needle now in doing this I actually bent two beading needles no good got to be thrown uh, the beading needles are not very strong now you can get very narrow strong sharp needles or tapestry needles and that is what I'm using here this is just a regular sewing needle one that I've used throughout this project now because it isn't as narrow as a normal beading needle there will be beads that get stuck at the bottom and you have to take them off so just be warned if you do use an ordinary um, sharp needle there may be times when you're going to have to stop what you do to remove a bead from the end okay but if you're willing to do that then these are a lot stronger than beading needles and if you have a slight problem with your hands they're easy to grip and I, I prefer these I prefer these I won't be using my beading needles again but I felt I needed beading needles because that's the way to do it but anyway let's make a start so I've left um, as I said I've left three here I'm done we'll start with the well we'll do this one so I'm going to just get that into the cat in there we're there now right now take the needle through from the back to the front wherever you want to place it now I did start off with these with tracing the middle this one here it's tracing the middle that one there I'm tracing the middle and by the time I did that I thought no I'm now going to just do follow the shape a shape that I like so what I will do here I will actually follow the outside of the purple ring here the chain stitch ring so I'm now that is it's quite secure but we just want to make sure it really is so I'm just going to do a little back stitch here and catch it to knot it again now that is quite secure that is really knotted so my little tray of beads here I've taken them out of my bead jar into this which is quite easy to for me to pick up now I am going to do this the cheats way now many people will do this bead by bead but to be honest you know have we really got time to do this bead by bead so I'm going to with my needle I'm just going to pick up a few beads now some of these I can see already some of these holes are very small so I'm going to look for the bigger beads there um, that one looks like a small hole yeah you see that that bead has a small hole there so that bead has to come off 
I'll set that down and then I'm looking for beads now with a larger hole. Oh dear. That's too big. So I've got a couple of beads there. That bead there, luckily it was the last one needs to come off, the hole's too small. Now with a beading needle you wouldn't get this problem. Because as I said, if you haven't seen a beading needle, um, I should bring one over and show you. That one's too small. They are very, very skinny. And they are obviously designed to pick up the beads. That one looks too small already. Yeah, you see that one? So that one won't go through. That needs to come off. So we've got a few there at the moment. So there are the beads, nicely strung on the thread. And you see that, quite a number of them. Um, all I'm going to do now is put my needle where are we up there put my needle where I want the beads to finish I mean I might want a long string of beads so I would put my needle here but I don't I want a circle a small circle in the middle here at the end of this spike these spike stitches so I'm going to put my needle in there now keep your thumb over the strand so it doesn't knot up. Now we're going to keep the thumb there. Arrange the beads as you want it. Now that is quite firm, that little collection of beads. So I'm going to have it just there, okay? So I'm going to hold down the beads with the thumb. This is a bit awkward now. All right, so hold the beads down with this thumb here. Take the needle in. Right, so I've skipped two beads. I've taken my needle in and I'm going over the bead into the back. So I'm actually over sewing the beads on now. So I've done that too. I'm just going to go along anywhere just to hold this down. If you see this first row as tacking for a true circle. Right, so now I'm back to the beginning here. And now I'm going to go round and I'm going to secure it. Every, maybe two, every one bead. I'm going to do every two beads to make sure it is securely held down. Now, if you get your thumb now and pop it in here, inside the circle you can push the beads out to their full shape so you get no you get a nice taut shape and there we are and that's all there is to it a couple of minutes and you have yourself a nice row of beads quite firm as well at the moment, I might put a few crosses in these shapes here now I'm not sure but I feel it just needs something a focal point and it could be a couple of cross stitches here I don't want to overdo the cross stitches or one there just just four or five cross stitches just for um, interest just to hold your attention so just in case I do use the cross stitches, I'm just going to show you how to do one. Now I'll cover this up so it doesn't distract or detract. Right, so cross stitch, a lovely, lovely stitch to do. Very easy. Nice knot in from the back. And you're going to cross it. So you're going to cross it. Imagine that you're working in a square. Okay, so you're working in a square. So you've got even holes this way. You've got even holes that way, or it's an even length that way and an even length that way. So you end up with a box. So you'll take, 
your needle into there so straight across so you're going to run your needle down here where they meet and come out there and so this one will meet there and there and there is your cross nice blue. you can see a couple of crosses here in blue a tiny little one there another one here down there these are dyed in dyed in the same um uh, the same mixture that these were dyed in in the bottom i have no idea what these are they're not buttons there's some sort of um flat bead in there and very very it's very small so i thought these might just be the things just to finish this off completely and pop a few in the centers anyway i'm going to start here i've already knotted nice knot in the back secure i've done a little back stitch here i'll do another one there that's it that's quite secure now um let me see if i can get that just a bit bigger smashing and all i'm going to do is put one of these beads i'm calling those beads just going to secure it in a couple of places so onto the needle down we go and just over sew it a couple of times now you could actually do a button um, a blanket stitch around it you could do it decorative but i i think at the moment there's enough enough stitchery on here just to place these on to add a bit of plainness now against all the busy busy stitching so we do have a little bit of contrast going on here the plainness of this little this bead against all the busyness of what's going on around the edge now i've just over sewn that in four places like a cross and that's done there we go over the back no don't worry about the back how messy it is because that's going to be covered up anyway so that's that's done looking so there it is completely finished ready for the next step but before we do that i'm just going back to the inspiration just want to show you so we've gone from this the inspiration and I decided to use it round that way so there we are that row there is now this row here and we've gone from inspiration few dabs on the paper to this so that isn't bad is it really well that's the end of part one i hope you enjoyed it part two is to follow and that is making up the cover and placing the signatures in the journal ready for us to decorate